Just his knacky sack, the Lego maniac. He builds in the window, he's off the wall. He builds them big, he builds them small. In Lego land, he'll rock and roll. He's Lego wild, out of control. Sack, sack, he's a Lego maniac. Sack, sack. Lego land, King's Castle. All right, everyone, Airport thanks for listening. Thanks for joining us. It's another uh, Zach and Travis moment in time. What do you think about that one? That's better. <laughs> Here, pull that. You're, you're blocking out your microphone just a little bit. See how that thing? Oh, yeah. There you go. Uh, uh, I'm trying to think of where, because we got to get rid of the man on man traveling series. We well, so, just said flashback with Zach. Too bad we couldn't tie that in. That at least sounded somewhat clever rather than man on man. I feel like that's super clever, but you just don't like it. Um, What's that? The man on man is super clever. No. Okay. Um, how about uh, what, do you, what do you usually carry? carry on with zach do you I mean, like like uh like what's like what do you like, do you pack four suitcases like what do you got no carry on only are you legit yeah I, there's i haven't checked a bag and carry on five only years. i think we should call that carry yeah. carry on only with zach yeah don't ever check a bag don't carry on only traveling yeah. series yeah i don't care i mean i'm gone for three weeks and i'm bringing a carry on only carry I'm bringing carry on only. I like that. Yeah. So carry on only with Zach, uh, formerly known as Man on Man Traveling Series, and we're gonna always say that. I, so I can still get mine in there, but we can always get his in there. So we'll we'll title it as Carry On with Zach. Yeah. Carry just, on. Carry on. Just I mean, it, see that's it's a double meaning. Tr- trust me when I say it, it makes your life so much simpler. There, yeah. it has literally saved me thousands and thousands of dollars by having a carry on. Missing complete trips because I had a carry on. Like save me, like I would have missed flights because you had you you didn't have any check. I was flying on an award ticket that wasn't connected, so I had to get to San Francisco, and I was flying on an award ticket to Hong Kong. Um, of course, the one time there's a storm in San Francisco where they're knocking out incoming aircraft, especially small. I was flying the new A two twenty in, and they it was basically my flight kept getting delayed and delayed, and I I put in a bunch of time to to catch my my late flight. Well, finally, I'm like, I can't do any more. So I'm going to fly into San Jose and then take a cab up into San Francisco. So I'm on the plane I'm flying in there. Luckily able to get me on there because the flight kept getting delayed. And, uh, um, we're in our final approach, the worst turbulence ever. I mean, the plane is just shaking. Like you wouldn't believe Ugh. finally the captain's like, uh, we got to go circle. They just shut down the airport. I'm like, great. Like I still had time, you know, but I was a little nervous because I would have lost all my points and then everything, you know, it was a hundred thousand points to do this deal. And, uh, and I would have missed the trip. And, uh, so I, uh, we're out circling over the bay and finally the captain comes on. I'm like, phew, I'm going to just, no, we're running low on fuel. We're going to go, we have to land in Sacramento. And I'm like, well, the whole trip gone, everything, hotels, everything gone. But luckily, when they I landed, they had la- a parachute. And they no, threw you out. no, we landed, and I asked the flight attendant. I said, "Hey, I need to get off now." I'm like, well, we're just going to refuel, and then they just opened San Jose. We're gonna, we're gonna try and get back in the air in the next hour or two. And I'm like, and then I still have an hour cab ride. But in San Francisco, I told her my story, and she said, "You know, we had this conversation." She goes, "Well, um, if you- if we have a gate, if we have a gate to fuel, then you can get off. But if you if the fuel truck comes to us, um, you're stuck on the plane." And then, so I was like, I'm we, luckily we got a gate and, uh, I grabbed my luggage and I was gone. But if my luggage would have been below the plane, nothing. You're stuck. Done. Yep. I jumped in, took a $350 cab ride to San that's Francisco. Another, that's another flight. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's another round trip flight. But I made my flight. Uh, the door was closing about 10 minutes after I got off the plane, made my trip to Hong Kong and everything was good. Wow. But only because I was carry on only. So anyways, have you ever, have you ever, um, uh, first off. We can call it carry on with Zach. Hey, uh, don't don't check yourself. I, li- I like that one too. <laughs> okay. <laughs> as yeah. long as it doesn't have man on man traveling, yeah. so you're, you're yeah. okay with yeah. apps. You can call it anything in the world. Yeah. Just plain, and we'll call it plain Zach. Just plain Zach. Just, just, there we go. <laughs> just plain Zach. Yeah. So I like planes. <laughs> yeah. There's so many. I'm a freaking marketing genius. Um, not All as right. good as Aaron Mayer. I don't know. I feel like I'm giving him the run for the money right now. Yeah. Plus, he's uh, he's got a baby on his brain right now. He's got about to about to have a kid. Did you ever think Aaron Mayer would have a kid? And if you did, were you like calling CPS immediately? Well, I'm kidding. I mean, in a successful relationship, did I think he was going to have a kid? No. But did I think that he might have like seven running around at some point? 
Uh, maybe yeah. maybe yeah. so uh just plain old zach because you're 38 now i like the old part yep and then uh we'll name it plain carry on because you get to double meaning you can <laughs> carry on about your carry on you can talk about talk talk carry on you know and then or don't check yourself which is good as well <laughs> <laughs> these are all good so we'll just throw these around yeah we'll, maybe yeah so anyway zach so uh you went on a trip to where with your mom and uh her husband ron her husband ron <laughs> yeah what uh where do they live by the way they live up in lakeland not, okay not oh, too far okay from me. so then you're able to just you guys kind of probably ubered together or drove do you guys do the wally park what do you guys do do you guys park a vehicle um i usually for my work trips and stuff i take a, a uber or a lyft um lyft because you can schedule in auburn uber you can't um and then work pays for me to get there but um, if it's a shorter trip, they will all either drop them off. Like if we're going together, which we do like maybe once a year, um, if it's a short trip to go to see my brothers, we'll park. Um, but if it's a long trip, we're, like we are gone for 16 days, that's a lot of parking yeah. fees. So yeah, just take an true. Uber. Just Ubered it. Yep. It was probably cheaper. Yeah. Yeah. It's 50 bucks each way. Either way. Yeah. Yeah. So, so you guys head out there. Where did you guys go? Uh, we did Singapore, um, Koh Samui, Thailand. Just a little island in the Bay of Thailand. Operation Kosamui from Meet the Parents. Remember? No? Uh, I remember. Like, I don't remember that, but yes. You don't remember? That's where they're going when he's like trying to, he no. thinks he's still a spy. <laughs> and he was going to tell, tell these guys about Operation Kosamui. And it's it, this, like this honeymoon, the surprise honeymoon he was planning. I, I remember that. Yeah. I remember the place, but yeah, yeah, I like that. Okay. Okay. But yeah, went to Kosamui. And then um, from there, spent a couple days in Bangkok and then into Hong Kong. And then back home. And so what was it like? Were, did you feel like a third wheel? Always. Yeah. I mean, it's fine. But I bailed by and went out by myself, too. I, I travel enough by myself where that's not an issue. Um, but for me, it was just cool for them to see. Because I've been doing the points and miles deal for a while. So I fly first in business class. And first in business class in an Asian carrier is unlike anything. Did they do that, too? Yeah. Okay. I yeah, thought you are so like, I, I'll be up here, guys. No. So, so I, what I was getting at see is. See in four hours. It was fun for for me to get to to see them experience that because that, that's that's a pretty cool experience is it the same thing as like being a kid because i remember being a kid and like you see a movie or you do something that you're like oh my parents are gonna love this and i and so then you bring it and then you show it with them and you're like looking at their reaction at each funny thing that you remember being funny i don't know that was me uh, y- y- yeah i mean parts of it were were fun like for me though it's it, we find kind of they like it because they can stretch out and eat good food and, and relax and not be cramped in there. For me, like, I would like to drink the fancy shit. They don't drink at all. So right. I, was, I drink you expensive. You by yourself. I drink yeah, 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 yeah. Who's having fun? I drink expensive booze. and Who's having fun? You having fun? Like yeah. Mom, you having fun? Ron, yep. fun. <laughs> but no, that's that's the, the part that I thought was pretty cool. And then. Was there any letdown? Was there anything that you're like, oh, I can't wait for them to see this? I don't think so. And it kind of was like, they were like, yeah. Kind of uh, cool maybe. Thing. I mean, I, I really like, so in Singapore, they have that Marina Bay Sands pool. Okay. Which when I go to Singapore, I like to stay there for one night. What just, is that type of pool? Is that like one of those infinity pools? Or? Yeah. over It's the one, like the, the crescent moon shaped one on top of those three oh, towers. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's yeah, like yeah. pretty much the most famous pool in the world. And they're like, eh, we'll be in the Yeah, we went tub. there for a one night. No, they didn't even do that. They just kind of like, kind of went up there and checked it out and that was it. Uh, but I mean. But you went They, they it. thought it was cool. Yeah, they thought it was cool, but what is it worth to go? Like, will I go stay there again if I go to Singapore? If I'm by myself, absolutely not. So if I like went with my brothers who had never been, maybe I would take them there. But if not, there's just there's better places to stay. Are you at the point where uh, are you are you still being in, like going to these same places, being impressed with everything, or is it becoming old hat? No, no. I mean, obviously, it's a big world, and I want to see as much of it as I can. Um, but there's, you know, I like I like Asia right now. I, I really do. Uh, you've never been treated uh, more kind. You know, I, obviously, people in Africa were fantastic too, and that's kind of a toss up. I would say is how how well you're treated. But but the luxury hotels in in some places in Asia are more expensive. But when you get into like Thailand and stuff, they're they're so cheap. So you're staying in places that you could never afford here in the states. Or in Europe or something like that, um, and then of course the food's just insane. Whether it be street food or or even the the uh, Asian buffet breakfast is a, at a hotel, 
it's like a Vegas buffet, but Just, but better, be- probably better quality of food. So then we ask you that with better quality of food because yeah. I know that as, as you're looking at the coronavirus and all these different, yeah. and they eat and you see all these random things how they eat things raw, like fo- and this and that, and, and, and I know it's all different, different yeah. countries and all that, but. Um, is there anything that you ate that was just like out of the ordinary that you've like, was it some sort of seafood? Was it some sort of raw thing or maybe it wasn't, maybe it was baked. Maybe it was just like, you had baked. Just the, probably the more of the preparation than anything and some of the stuff. And you just kind of try bites. Um, this last trip that I was in, you know, a few weeks ago, I was up in a very small town up near the border of Laos and, um, in Thailand and uh, like drove up into the, the from this airport Udon Thani and then drove another three hours. That was my first time driving on the opposite side of the road with the, with the, uh, and you're driving. Yeah. You're not Ubering. No, no, I'm, oh. I'm driving. Yeah. Wow. Rented a car and went for it. Are you on the right hand side of the car driving? Yeah. I'm on the opposite, yeah, side, opposite of, side of everything. Yeah. Everything's opposite. Oh, it, wow. It, everything's weird. Yep. Okay. Um, so did that, but the food preparation is definitely different. I mean, the, some of the stuff was absolutely fantastic. Some of it, I was like, what is this? And they're like, I don't know, pig insides. I'm like, well, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I was like, okay, cool, cool. But no, it's it, Did you eat it? good. Yeah. I didn't get sick. Yet. So that, no, that was, I mean, that was getting closer to three weeks now. Incubation period. Yeah, passed it. No. 14 days, uh, sucker. They, they know so much about this coronavirus. <laughs> yeah. All of a sudden, it's just 14 days. That's it. It's yeah. going to be like, oh, sorry. Well, you, heard my, four, you heard my theories months. in the last episode. I did it's, the math for you. Yeah, I stopped listening <laughs> when I was laughing hysterically. Um, so uh, so did they, did, did it seem like your mom and Ron, were they like, open for adventure or were they kind of like yeah we're gonna keep it kind of fun but safe like what was no what it, was it? It, i had it pretty planned out before just to for them but gotcha. singapore's the cleanest there you the, being in singapore is safe it's the cleanest nicest safest place on the planet okay it really is there's not i mean it's, it's insane how nice that city is i feel like america is but okay listen you like it so much you should go over there listen i mean look <laughs> I mean, the, I've said it before, but I love America just as much, Joe Dirt, as, much like as, the as anybody. Yeah, rock, love it or leave it. Yeah, yeah, keep on keeping on. <laughs> Life's a garden, dig it. <laughs> yeah, um, but no, I mean, I've said it before. Singapore's that it's it's really clean and nice, very nice. the 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 new airport, the addition to the airport, is called the Jewel. It's the craziest thing you've ever seen. What? What? Google it. It's a, it's like a mall attached to the airport. I like how you say that. Like it was like a. I feel like it's gonna be a tagline. Google it. Google me, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> that might be. The new, yeah. That might be the new, the new name. <laughs> um, <coughs> Jesus, are you? Sure? You're the super Every, spreader. <laughs> I was fine until you showed up. Yeah. Also, I think this cough. Yeah. Um, but no, it's like this. I don't know, hundred foot indoor waterfall with light and laser shows at night with a train running through the middle of it and a full, basically right rainforest in a mall that's attached to the airport. It's unlike anything you've ever seen before. That would be pretty crazy to see. That's crazy. I put it on my um, Insta. Well, you know, you put things on your Insta all the time that they just become this like lost, like everything's might as well just be like some video from space. Cause it's like, I've taken a lot, a big break from social media, except for when I travel, I just like kind of post a, a pan, I see a cityscape, and then that's it. And all of a sudden, there's a girl in it. There's girls in Asia, yeah. There's, there's so, lots of people. It everywhere. seems like there's like this uh, <laughs> so, yeah, one that's like always kind of like was there, it was just like always in like yeah, hanging uh, hanging out, hanging out with you. Yeah, yeah. I Same met. tourist that was kind of hanging out. Not a tourist. Oh, okay. Yeah. So what is? is oh, you, just a uh, uh, yeah. I'm, we're fishing right now. <laughs> You're on the hook, but I'm letting the line out. Okay, so you go. You can take where that line wherever you want. This is on you. I won't ask any more uh, like leading questions. But am I going to be invited to the wedding? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, when we went, so with my mom, went with my mom and her mom, uh, But when we went to uh, went up went up into Samui, went to a, a elephant sanctuary. Wait, 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 wait! Are you like skipping over what I just said and you're moving on? Uh, but we went to an elephant sanctuary because. <laughs> It'd be pretty funny if you met this chicken at an elephant's and like that was your 
That was your segue into it. No. Nope. Nope. All right, let's just go ahead and start again. Everyone, thanks for listening. Um, we're gonna go. Don't check yourself. And, but uh, but uh, all right. So you so you and you, your mom and Ron, yeah, uh, heading to the elephant sanctuary. Yeah, we went to. So I got it. Uh, I think for Mother's Day for my mom last year, and just paid for it in advance for us to go. But it was that was pretty cool. Got to feed all these different elephants that had been rescued and like abused for elephant tourism throughout. You know. Asia, different parts of Asia and stuff. So that was really cool. So, so someone posted about that. Amber Masseri posted about that of like how she went to one of these like uh, I don't know if it was a sanctuary of rescues of these elephants. Yeah, but you know she felt really bad after watching this documentary. It's like some Netflix documentary yeah. and this and that. No, these these animals are treated like. But could you even release those back into the wild? Oh no, but there's not really any wild elephants in Thailand. Oh, I mean, I don't know anything about geology. Yeah, I mean, they're all just kind of there. It's just there's a lot of tourists like to get their picture taken and um, take, uh, uh, you know, ride on the elephant's back up to waterfalls and stuff like that while the, the elephants are getting their heads bashed in with spikes to oh, get them to behave. Really? Oh, yeah, it's awful. Yeah, I mean, that's it. So these sanctuaries, some of them are better than others. The one that we went to, like you don't get to bathe them. You don't do any these these animals just roam on their own. They're they're completely free. You just see them, kind of wave and, and at you, them. You feed them. You get to okay. feed them and stuff like that. But you don't. You know, a lot of them, and I don't think there's anything probably wrong with bathing them um, and stuff. But it's still them kind of trained to behave while right. they're doing all this stuff. Yeah. I don't know. This one, this one was literally they just had open rain, and they're um, they're so abused when they got there. They are basically assigned a handler. Um, and these people literally sleep next to them, like whether it be in their car or in a tent every single night. Yeah, really? Yes. Every single night to get them to realize Feel that's comfortable. And so even like as these elephants are roaming around, these people are always within eyesight to keep them calm just yeah. in case, you know? So, so it's almost like they're, yeah, they're literally like best friends. It's like the, the reversal of, uh, where they have the PTSD dog and this yeah, and that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. The human is the dog yep. in this scenario and the elephant is the one that has had this trauma. Yep. Interesting. Yeah, it was pretty, uh, it's pretty cool, cool experience, you know? Um, yeah, so we did that and, and then, so we spent, uh, a few nights on one side of Samui on the, uh, eastern side so you can watch the sunrise and stuff like that and that's the more populated side and then the next couple nights we went over on the western side which is there's just amazing sunsets and cool it was fun was it uh i just trying to picture going with my mom and you know like dad in a sense to where it's like well, well, you don't God. have to hang out with them all the time so you what know? you do on your own i want to hear what you did on your own i go out and have drinks and go have lunch do you ever get yourself into some scary situations no You've never got yourself like I walked into the wrong bar or I walked into the wrong area of town and I was like, whoa. I Not that I'm aware of. Maybe I did. And I feel like I'm pretty aware when I travel. I like to keep my, my head on straight. Uh, you know, I don't get too drunk or anything like right. that, you know, but, uh, not that I'm aware of, and like I said, like Singapore's clean and safe and nice right. and stuff like that, so you're good there. But I'm sure there's uh, uh, there's there are areas like any other city or town where there's just. I like... honestly don't know in Singapore, <clears throat> right? In Thailand, absolutely. Uh, there's that uh, stuff all over, but I don't know. There's like t- there's literally like a police force dedicated to tourism. Oh, okay. They, they, they want it's the called money. the tourist police. They yeah. want the money coming. Yeah. In. Don't don't rent jet skis. It's a scam. You know, in Thailand, don't mopeds are. If you're going to rent a moped, make sure some of them, the times they'll ask for your actual physical par- passport. Never, ever, ever do that. You know? Why is so that? You're going to give somebody your only act, you, the only thing you have to leave the country, you're going to just hand that over. Oh, as collateral. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Don't ever do that. Yeah. How'd you, so, how'd you hear about that? Like, I've, I've do it. just read stories. I do my research before I travel. Okay. Yeah. Is it fun well, kind of gearing up for it? Is like going like- The there, excitement like- for me is, is, is in the planning. Yeah. Dude, I, can can here's the thing uh-huh. okay this is where i can't i feel like you're you'd be a great i, I gotta figure out your, your your tips on this because anytime i try to plan everything and i and i get excited for it i'll do the mm-hmm. research i'll read about it oh this show's gonna be this night or this is gonna be going on this and this and that and then i get a flat tire or there's <laughs> other like something yeah. terrible happens and it's like okay now everything's out the window on this day i mean that happens but has I told it ever- you my story about almost missing my flight. But you made it. Luckily. Because I didn't check a bag. 
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so don't check yourself. Yeah. Uh, it, luckily, I, I almost didn't. And I was going for such a short period of time that it wouldn't have made sense for me to rebook the flight and do all that stuff. Like, I, I literally would have missed out on five days on a beach in Asia. You would have missed, but you had four days because you'd probably get a... Probably wouldn't have, I probably wouldn't have rebooked it. Well, so here's the deal is I would have missed my flight and then I booked with points and miles, right? And it's usually okay. I mean, you can get those points back. You really can. You might have to pay a fine or something like that, but it's going to take a little bit to deposit, right? I was flying, and this is going to make, isn't going to make sense to everybody, but I was flying Singapore Airlines, which is a transfer partner of Chase, City, and Amex. Unfortunately, it's not an instant transfer partner. So it's going to take 12 to 24 hours for my points from one of those banks to transfer to Singapore to rebook that ticket. Okay. So now we're talking, now we're talking, they go through and it it just would have been, it it wouldn't have worked. So one of my wife's friends, Mm -hmm. she went to Africa. She reminds me of you. She's actually a flight attendant. She works for, I think, Delta. Oh, cool. And Delta shut down all flights to China and they're probably going to a few to Singapore, or I mean to to, uh, Seoul. And Korea. Korea is going to be done too. Yeah, but she so she's had like a two week to three weeks. Uh, she's been with her mom, maybe her dad, in Africa. Nice, t- taking pictures, doing Love this, it. doing yeah. that. And I was like, man, this is. I feel like I'm watching. This is a female yeah. version of Zach. Yeah. And uh, but she also brought a friend that had the uh, what's that pass? The the pass where you kind of bring a buddy a buddy pass. I think it's called a buddy pass. Okay. Yeah. If sense. you work for an airline, I think you can kind of do that. Right. Stuff. And yeah. I've actually flown on a buddy pass before. Yeah. I think I have too. Yeah. But you're always like bumped. Oh yeah, yeah. So it's you want to find a not sold out flight. No, you got to you got to look at the buckets, the fare buckets and stuff, and and all that. Yeah. So they went to they went to Africa, flying back, hit Dubai, in Dubai, couldn't get on a plane. Couldn't get on a flight. Huh. And then, Wonder what air, so they obviously flew Emirates into Dubai. Stuck. Really? She's been stuck. Like it's been like two or three days, Ooh. just stuck at the airport. Wait, I think I, th- I don't know if I've got an update on this yet, but I think it's been like two days at least. Yeah. Stuck. Hasn't been able to to get on a uh, a flight, a but flight everyone on. else has. Everyone else is flying out. Huh. But she's still just kind of waiting for that seat to open up. There's worse places to be stuck. At. I guess that's true. Yeah. Oakland. But- Oakland Maybe. would be a horrible place. No, I don't know. I mean, if you drive a little bit east, Pleasanton, Livermore, it's nice out there. <laughs> it's really like twenty minute drive, and it is beautiful. Are you local? Are you uh, sorry, lo- local? Are you loyal to Oakland now? The Raiders. I'm a Raiders fan. But now they're in Las Vegas. So are you still? I'm a, I'm a Raiders fan. So are you L.A. then too? When the L.A. Raiders? I, and I liked them. When they if were... they moved up to Seattle and they were the Tacoma, the Tacoma Raiders, would you? Would you still? What city could they go to that you would not be a fan anymore of the Raiders? I, I think they should have stayed in California, but Vegas is a close second. It's to very that. close, yeah. It's a close second to that. Um, they should have. They should have stayed. I think the NFL probably shot themselves in the foot. Um, the the issue is is when when they moved, didn't give the Raiders L A and gave it to the Chargers. Um, they could have moved the Chargers, who have never had a fan base. They're a joke. Um, they can't even sell out StubHub, right? Um, to, to to Vegas, who is dying for a professional football and now team, they, and they've got it. Exactly, um, and they could have moved the Raiders to uh, to um, L.A. and or could have stayed in Oakland. Well, there's no, there was no stadium coming. That's true. They've been promised that for thirty years. Um, it's weird that they did it the opposite way, though. Well, it's because Kroenke, the owner of the Rams, was funding the stadium, and he's why would he want his the team that he owns to play second fiddle to a guy that's just renting a stadium? Yeah, that's true. You know what I mean? If the right. Raiders, so so now, I mean, the Rams are popular and. Not as in the Chargers are a joke, so. But I think ultimately they they kind of lost out. I would have liked for the Raiders to go back to Los Angeles. You think Derek Carr is gone? I hope not. Is yeah. there writing on the wall for him though? I don't think so. I mean, what are you going to do? Bring in a forty-two-year-old Brady who can't throw the ball down the field? You think Brady would even come over here? I mean, I think. I don't know. He's played on a discount for so many years. If he can make thirty mil a year or thirty five mil a year, but his wife. I mean, they're, they're, they've got they zillions. Sold their yeah, exactly. They zillions sold, of dollars. I don't yeah. know. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I don't know. Maybe he wants to play where it's warm. Maybe he wants to go to San Diego. That's true too. Um, Being or, older, or or you know, Los Angeles. Getting Chargers. older. Getting older. Yeah, you're like warm. Well, yeah. <laughs> Sounds it's, fun to play I, in. I feel that. Yeah, I don't even play professional yeah. sports. You know what I mean? It would be bad. Yeah. Um, I no, but I hope Carr stays. I mean, he was forty two hundred yards with 
74% completion rating with no wide receivers. Oh, yeah. His number one receiver last year was a tight end. And then his actual wide receiver was San, or yeah, it would have been San Diego's number four was right. a number one for the Raiders last right. year. So, I mean, right. what, do you, what do you expect? And he did that with yeah. the worst defense in the league. And if it wasn't for some very terrible calls, ones where the NFL actually admitted they cost them an entire game, Gosh. Uh, they would have made the playoffs with that. What do that. you think of Lamar Jackson? He's good, very talented. Greatest quarterback ever? No, well, not even close. But for last year, was he the greatest quarterback ever? No, he can't throw. Postseason? What are you saying? Did, is he, is did, he Lamar check down? Did he throw? Did he throw? Did he throw very well? He's very talented. I hope, and very I hope, fun to watch. I hope Mike Mike Martinez is listening. Yeah, to this. <laughs> yeah. No, well, he's very good. Uh, he's very good. But he had a really good running game, and he's just dynamite. You know, very electric with the ball and stuff. But um, he threw the ball great during the regular season, but he did not pass the ball well. He just didn't. I mean. I, I just have to talk Raiders with you every once in a while. Yeah. I know we're talking about I get trips. It. No, but I seriously hope Carr stays. And if you walk in line, so many people think like Carr is a check down guy and stuff. If you want somebody to pass, throw the ball down the field, you better be cheering for a new, or rooting for a new coach, not a new um, quarterback, because that is Gruden's offense. Go back and watch old Rich Gannon tape when he played for the Raiders when they went to the Super Bowl. The the cannon, nicknamed the cannon, uh, yeah. though. Was he check down cannon? Heck yes. Charlie Garner, Jerry Rice, and Tim Brown. They didn't throw the ball downfield at all. Was there any bad blood when when you guys got Jerry Rice between in the Bay Area? Like, were people? Oh, I don't know. I was 15. 18, 19 <laughs> yeah, years old, true. twenty. You know, uh, but was, yeah, he looked good in a Raiders uniform. He's and a, he oh. went. To, he played in the Super Bowl. They didn't win it, but played in the Super Bowl in the silver and black. He looked great in a Seahawks uniform too for that day. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that might have nobody looks great in a Seahawks <laughs> uniform. It's the dumbest uniform ever. <laughs> yeah. Oh um, man. So, but, so yeah. are you? We I, I know we're I get bouncing around. We talked about it a little bit last That's time. Um, are you even if you can't get tickets? Yeah, I'll go tickets, to a, I'll go to a few you, few games for sure, for sure, hundred percent, hundred percent. Yeah, and flights being flights being paid for by your miles. No, I, I don't. I well, I mean, maybe I have a bunch of gift cards and stuff I got to use that I got for free, kind of playing the miles game, um, on Delta gift cards and stuff like that, and some airline credits stuff like that. But I I don't. I try not to use miles for um, domestic flights. Yeah. What a waste. I just don't. There's just so much more. I mean, why would I spend 25,000 miles to fly to, you know, somewhere in the States when I could use 55,000 to fly business class to Asia? You know what I mean? Yeah, that makes sense. Now, so a $500 plane ticket compared to a $7,000 plane ticket. Okay. A little yeah. different. Yeah. A little different. Yeah. Um, Financially, though, this is something I always, when I tell people this yeah. and I teach people this. Value for me is much different than value for other people. If somebody doesn't have a lot of money and they happen to have enough miles to fly them and their kids to Disneyland, I think that's amazing value. You know what I mean? Right. Like for well, me, you. I don't have any kids and right. so I don't have any donate, bills. So donate I, to my family. I appreciate no, that. No, no. Very sweet of you. I would never do that. <laughs> you know? Now, has anyone reached out to you since you've had – because I've had a few people reach out to me saying, hey uh, – you don't have to give names, but um, – but they've said, "Hey, I want to know how Zach does this. I want to know how Zach does this." Yeah, Have I've done. I've helped a, a few people. Uh, obviously, my mom and Ron—they were able to do this whole trip all over Southeast but Asia. Rec- recently, kind of thing. Yeah, no, I've done. Um, so Ruben Oliano, he wouldn't care if I talked about it. So I got him um, and his wife home in business class from Europe, um, which was really good. And then um, we actually had it all planned and. I understand why that, but they actually just canceled. They had a Bali and um, I believe Philippines and Singapore trip that they just canceled. It was coming up here in like another couple of weeks, but just it wasn't worth it for them with all the virus stuff going on over right. there. So I totally, I totally understand that. Um, but that was all on points and miles as well. But they've already rebooked for the fall, so so they just postponed is all they did. So and that's going to be a hundred percent free. Wow, points and miles. Yeah, so I'm excited for them to get to experience that. I'm a layman. When it comes to like business class and first class mm-hmm. and, and what's the, what is there, is it third class? What's the. Oh, there's now there's premium economy, you know, or economy plus. What's the on. worst one? What's the one that you're Just like. Coach. Okay. Well, now in domestic, the domestic flights, you know, because most U.S. Once again, I love America, but most U.S. carriers are an absolute joke. Show the shirt. No, no offense to. Show the shirt. No, no offense. <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> no offense to any of flight attendants that listen to this, but um, yeah, just the the service is the training the everything is just a really good. So what I got to the class of services is there's now basic economy in for domestic carriers, but basically you pay $30 less than a normal economy seat, but you don't get to choose your, your seat. You're like the last one on the plane. So yeah. there's no bin space. You can't, well, some of them you can't even, some of them you can't even bring a carry on like, you, like overhead bin space. I think you got to bring like a backpack that goes into the seat and that's it. So, so, so if you don't check yourself, you're just, yeah. just kind of screwed. Have you ever had uh, Jesse Madrid, who listens to the podcast? No, I've always wondered if I was going to have her I've as had a flight her once. Really? That's pretty and cool. I barely, and I barely fly. I just happened to fly from LA to uh, LAX to Seattle. Nice. And next thing I know, she's walking in with the uh, up up the as I'm sitting there. I'm like, oh, that girl looks familiar, and she's with the pilot. This is years yeah. ago, and I'm like, that's Jesse. Oh my god! No, I, I've never actually had her as a flight attendant. Um, she happened to be. And that just randomly had a, um, I don't know, she, she was in Maui. She took a flight in when my cousin Kale got married all those years ago. And so yeah. she went to Kale's wedding. Oh, it just happened to be. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. So that, that, but that was the closest thing to having a flight with her. Yeah. She, she said that she had um, Matt Damon on mm. one of her flights mm. in, in first class. Cool. I think that was the most famous one she's ever. Nice. That'd be crazy. Have you, have you seen anyone famous or like, recognizable maybe on your one of your first class flights anywhere? um nothing the prince of no i flew next to um gosh what's his name um flying up from lax to seattle on delta i was flying a basketball player matt barnes really yeah that's he pretty had a, cool he had a baseball bat I don't know how they let him get away with it. It was an autographed baseball bat by somebody, oh. and he wouldn't check it or anything, but he was sitting right across the aisle from me, just wow. carrying a baseball bat. Wow. <laughs> yeah. You brought a chainsaw. No. That's kind, that's kind of crazy. But that was, I mean, that was the closest person that I've, I've seen famous, I think. And you've been at some nice nice uh, hotels and stuff, too, yeah. I'm sure. Have you seen anybody that might be famous at a pool or anything like that? No. Nope, your, I haven't. Your brother's pretty famous. Yeah. He yeah. was on a commercial. <laughs> yeah. I shot, I took a picture. I'm like, that's Nate. Yeah. Oh my gosh, that's Nate. And I went on Facebook. He's wearing his lab I, jacket. And I don't think he's on Facebook anymore. I don't think so either. Unless he deleted me and blocked me, which is Probably. understandable. Yeah. Um, but I'm like, that's Nate. And I'm like, it was crazy. It was like a blink of an eye, not blink of an eye, but it was, it was pretty fast. You had to just kind of see him for a moment. And I'm surprised. He's a good looking dude. Yeah, he hasn't aged a bit either. And he reminds me every time I watch any sort of movie. Who's the guy on um on uh Dirty Dancing? Patrick Swayze. He reminds me of Patrick Swayze. Yeah, that's cool. And I'm surprised no one's like, This is the next Patrick Swayze. I don't know. We need yeah. to have him in all of our films. Yeah. Nate's just so much bigger. You know, Nate's Nate's got a lot of muscle. He's a big guy, you know. Ripped. Yeah. Not an ounce of body fat. And I've always thought, well, wait till he gets to be my age. He's going to be harder to keep it off. No, he no, just gets in better and fine. Be- oh better and better gosh. shape. And if he gets, he feels like he's gaining weight, he'll like do 10 sit ups and five push ups and walk around the block. And it there he gone. is again. <laughs> it's bullshit. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I, I shot that picture. I sent it to you, sent it to, to Joey. He's like, dude, I think that's Nate. Yeah. And it was. Yeah. We it confirmed was. it, right? Yeah. Yeah. No, it was him. Yeah. What did he say? Did you, did you, did you, because you, you, you said, I don't know. But did you did you ask him and no you you just knew I just knew I you mean, saw you, the picture you know your brother. brother you know your brother looks like right yeah yeah cool you don't mention other people like, <laughs> to meet other people it's twice now uh, <laughs> sorry <laughs> tell your mom hi for me mm. you done that yet no you just say it on here she might listen does she listen <laughs> has she listened before I don't know I've never asked you probably haven't told her about it you don't promote yourself that's one thing I don't that I've noticed promote. you of all people. As I think you would make a great like traveling influencer, uh, you don't promote yourself. No, I don't. That's not really me. I don't know. Except if you people, do these these Facebook like stories of just well, the, like like I said promotion. The reason, the reason I want to is because I would like. I mean, like I said, it's not me, but I would like to help people travel for cheap or for free. And stuff like that's that. Right. Oh, yeah. That's and, right. Uh, I mean, I'll be honest with you. Not necessarily always out of the kindness of my heart. I'll always give you the best suggestions on how to do it. Um, but 
I would prefer if you use some of our referral links and things like that. So I get a little bit of kickback. So then everyone that's kind of afraid, like, oh, Zach probably doesn't want to talk about this. Zach wants to talk no, about this. No, I'm a this, nerd. But <laughs> please, if you get into this, yeah. he's in it for the referrals too. Yeah, So yeah. if you feel like, oh, it's awkward, but I don't I've really helped. want to ask a friend. But I've helped. Like I, like I said, I've... Uh, well, you and I were talking about yeah. it. Uh, I don't say any name just because I don't like it when people, you know, name drop. Broad, well, no, broadcast when they're going to be out of town and stuff right. like that. That's not cool. Like here we go on what March tenth. Yeah, I'm going to be on March tenth. Yeah, <laughs> I live in a shitty apartment. What are we going to get? <laughs> <laughs> you the know? Coronavirus. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Corona number one. Uh, <clears throat> but I helped a, a guy we went to high school with. Um, him and his wife wanted to go to uh, uh, Ireland, I believe, and we started working towards getting the right cards and the points built up and stuff like that. Um, and he actually messaged me recently and said, you know, plans had changed, um, but he really wanted to go to the Kentucky Derby this mm. year. And uh, and domestic well, flight, you already said domestic exa- flight, exactly. Um, and they have a, a small business. And so they've actually been able to rack up points very rapidly um, on top of some of the referral bonuses and or, or, or sign up bonuses and some other things that I've, I've kind of helped them get through. But, um, you know, hotel rooms were going. I think we looked at like a Hyatt, just a, like a Hyatt place, not a During grand Hyatt, not a, park, not a park Hyatt, nothing. It was eleven hundred, twelve hundred dollars a night wow. for this time. Got it, you know, all for free, flights for free, all that stuff. So. You know, if you want to take everything at face value, we're talking at probably, you know, a seven, eight thousand dollar trip for free. That's insane. So, so that's that's pretty good. That's good. And like I said, I mean, we could get that value out of one plane ticket too. I've I've flown because you're going flo- yeah. first class home from Africa on Cathay Pacific and I priced it out at twenty two thousand dollars one way. What's first class like? Dom P caviar. Vintage Krug, not even the not even regular Krug champagne. Vintage Krug. Do you ever have people look at you like you're like they think, oh yeah, this guy's totally economy, and then you're like they're like now boarding first class. Only only once, um, only once it was this dude. So there's in Cathay, it was it was in Hong Kong, and it was actually after my late. It was I was flying home from Africa, uh, and so I scheduled in two days in Hong Kong just to sit by the pool, hot weather, you know, good food stuff like that to kind of unwind after Africa before I went to work, and. uh and so there's uh, six seats in first class in a triple seven. It's pretty private, you know, um, just two rows of three. So it's pretty nice. Um, really nice. Actually, the lounges in Hong Kong are insane too. I mean, it, it, there, there's some, some of my, the, the pier first class lounge in Hong Kong is one of the most comfortable spaces you'll ever find at an airport. Um, but anyway, long story short, this guy I'm, I'm going to, they call first class and I'm walking up and this guy is number one in the business class line. And he puts his arm out and blocks me and says, the line's back there. And I said, oh, I'm first class. <laughs> and, just, and, and I just walked right by him. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, but, uh, that, Wait, how old was this dude? I, he was probably mid-40s. And then what were you dressed like? Were you wearing a kiss? No. A kiss? Uh... <laughs> uh, no, but I for sure. So as I've gotten older and my feet swell up so bad, I was for sure wearing shorts and like compression socks. Already hiked up to the knee too. <laughs> like, like black surgical compression socks. <laughs> Probably a, a Raiders hat, like you a know. shaved uh, Dan Blitzerin. Uh, <laughs> <You know. laughs> With his brand Ignite, Ignite. <laughs> yeah. like, so what did the guy? What, did the guy give you a weird look at all? No, like after no, got... I just kept walking. But other than that, it's been t- totally fine. You know, lines it, back there. Well, because you know, if you you walk up, there's separate check in areas, and a lot of times they keep you segregated from. The lesser class, I guess. Honestly, you do. Like yeah. you, you go to um, like the check-in experience. Like flying, I flew first class on um, Thai Airways from Bangkok to Sydney, Australia, and um, like you walk through a separate door at the airport. You, the line's a mile long here, and then you walk to this separate section, and it's like behind these closed doors where they have you just sit on a couch, and they come to you, and then from there they walk you through private immigration, private security. Right after that, you have a golf court sitting there that drives you to the spa. Uh, I had an hour long. Does it cost anything more? No, it's, it's all free. It's because it's part of your first class yeah. ticket. Yeah. And then and then after the spa and after you have some champagne and some lunch or whatever, they put you back on the golf cart and drive you to your plane. And literally, they block off a 747 line of passengers, you know, a massive plane full, just so you could walk on alone 
Wow. Yeah. So so when when you get the champagne, does that cost money though? No, everything's free. Everything's comped? Everything's then free. Then why is not anyone I mean it's like it would pay for itself people, in a sense. People think it's a scam. Um when I talk about this, they don't, they don't really believe it. And they're like, that can't be right. That's not like, or, or they say there's no, there's no award availability or they use, you know, they just don't understand it. Like they use their Alaska miles on Alaska airlines, which seems logical. Right. And it's literally about the worst value you can do. Really? Yeah. Don't do that. Unless, like I Is said, that a free pro tip right there. That's a, just a, yeah, it's a, a tip. For so sure. number one, carry on only. Carry Number on two, only. do not use your Alaska miles with, <laughs> to fly Alaska, to fly Alaska Airlines. Use British Airways miles to fly Alaska Airlines. Gotcha. Yeah. British Airways Avios, they're called. What does that mean? That's the name of their mileage program. Avios? Avios. A-V-I-O-S. I've seen it. Yeah. So, pro tip. It's a good pro tip. Ask me how. I'll tell you. You should wear a button. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Use your Alaska <laughs> miles to fly um, Cathay Pacific to... Africa or Australia or Southeast Asia in business class. So, man, you're just dropping bangers right now. Yeah, 55,000 miles. Hope you guys are taking notes. 55,000 miles to get to anywhere in Southeast Asia with a free stopover in Hong Kong. That's nothing. 70,000 for me to fly first class home from uh from Africa. Yeah. Look at you go. Yeah, well, and unfortunately they just joined One World. I don't know if you saw that. No. That's a, I don't follow. Yeah, that's an airline alliance. They've always kind of been kind of on the fringe of it, but now they're officially joining and people think that's super cool, but now they're tied in with American. Have you ever like learned a lesson that you're like, Oh, I wish I would have known this before this, but now going forward, so my, I will now, my do last, this from now on. my last trip, I, uh, I transferred or two trips ago. I, I was flying home, um, on, EVA Airlines, it's a Taiwanese airlines, fantastic. Um, they have a couple flights out of SeaTac, and I was flying home there, and I transfer a partner. So it's another, they're part of Star Alliance, which United is, so I transferred 90, 95,000 um, chase points to United and booked the ticket. Well, come to find out that there's a uh, Brazilian airlines called Avianca, and they have a partnership, or they have a, a program called Life Miles, and I think it's like, 78,000. So I could have saved almost 20,000 miles, but mm. I found that out. So I created a Brazilian frequent flyer program and transferred Amex points to there. And I saved this last trip 20,000 miles. So that's one thing that I learned that I was frustrated nice. with that I lost 20,000 miles for nothing. So it's something you're, it, so there are things that you're, I always learn that you're learning yeah, on. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Man. Yeah. Is Good. there a book coming out? Is there going to be a, a blog? Uh, uh, I've thought about it. I think you'd be, I think you should do it. I mean, I like doing this podcast, yeah. but again, you're always on the road and it, it's like, it'd be good to kind of like, Hey guys, I learned this. Subs- go to, go to my Patreon yeah. for five bucks a month. You get my <laughs> access to uh, this, this traveling blog. I I, I've thought about it. I would like to do like, if I could do, if I was, even though I handle all technology for like a large company, like in stuff like that, I'm not Terrible. tech savvy. Like yeah. if I could do like YouTube videos of like how to get value out of booking with American miles or out of Alaska miles or something like that and do it, but I don't know how. So no, just if you want to go somewhere, pick any spot on the globe, I'll teach you to get there for free. Buckley. You can call Walk. him. Yeah. <laughs> Take yeah. A <laughs> yeah. That's pretty cool. Um, Where's your next, what's the next trip coming up that, I mean, I know that with the freaking CDC and the Corona and this and that, besides going to Vegas in March, what, what's the, uh, which I think this will probably be released after all that. Mm-hmm. Um, where's your plan? What's the next big trip? I'll get back to Southeast Asia, hopefully in the next few months. It's just work dependent. Um, does work ever give you a hard time? About it always. Stuff? But if you have days off, use them. And then, um, if I use my paid time off. Then I take it off unpaid, and I never, even with when I have PTO, I never ever take it off during our busy season. I know I know better than that. I've been in construction for too long to know. I, I know when you can and can't take. So it no off. one's like, all right, dude, to do this again, you're done. No, okay. nope. I give them plenty of notice. Um, I don't think I'd ever get to that. And honestly, even when I'm taking unpaid time off, I always answer my phone. I'm always on the computer. So even when I'm not being paid to work, I'm working. So they really. Shouldn't say something, but I do. I would understand if they they wanted me to calm down. But like this last trip, even though I was gone for ten days, um, I left on a Thursday, so 
you know, I only missed Friday. I only missed six days, you know, but I got two weekends out of the deal. And like, I worked out like it's weird. I had the literally, literally the longest Monday ever. And so hear me out. I left Singapore at 820, 8.20 a.m. On, on a Monday. Monday, um, the 10th. I landed in Tokyo, Japan at 4.30. A.m.? No. P.M. P.M. On Monday, the 10th. I had a two-hour layover. So it's 6.30. 6.30. Monday, the 10th. And then I flew back to Seattle, and I landed at 9.30 a.m. on Monday the 10th and went took an Uber to work. I feel like that's time travel. It was. That's, a, <laughs> that's kind of time travel. Yeah. And mind you, that was a six-hour flight and like an 11-hour flight thrown in between all that. And, uh, and I landed one hour after I left. That's so crazy. I was tired. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and But I went straight to work because I didn't want to take another day off. Oh, no way. Yeah. But you also had some comfy flights a little bit where you could sleep. Yeah, yeah. You know, I, I drank too much on the leg because I was kind of sad. I, so I have a friend, you know, that, that I go see and I, you know, you say your goodbyes and you're kind of sad. Right. Um, so I drank a significant amount on the uh, Singapore to wow. Tokyo um, leg. Yeah. Um, watched some movies and just drank. And uh, Was it a it, bunch it was of my... uh, rom-coms? No, no, no. <laughs> uh, and it was my first time flying JL, um, the... Um, Japanese airline. Yeah. So that was pretty cool. And so I just wanted to try their booze menu. And I did. And uh and the and then so I was hung over on the next flight. So it was super hot because the Asian carriers, a lot of them, not all of them, but a lot of them keep their temperatures very hot in the cabin. Keeps the coronavirus going. Yeah, so that's good. Um so I was just very uncomfortable the whole flight back. It was cool though. Have Apex ever, suites, pretty nice. Have you ever hit any like we're going to crash? turbulence the the one where i talked about the beginning of this when um and i was so stressed out i didn't even think about it but looking back the turbulence flying into san jose where we had to divert um to sacramento was the worst thing ever so when people saw me get off the plane there's probably 20 people that jumped off jumped in and said they were not flying anymore it was that bad oh really yeah they're like sorry you gotta stay on no no they they if you had to carry anyway there was a bunch of people that just got off they they, they did the same thing you did yeah they're like we're getting off i don't care even if they even if they had checked their baggage yeah they're they're like leave it we're done yeah it was it was it was very very bad um i've so flying over the mountains like if you leave um hong kong and you fly over the mountains into uh like in japan there's a stretch there that gets pretty violent um have you hit it a few times? Yeah, I've hit it like two or three times. Yeah. It's pretty good. You can kind of expect it. And it's just a constant rumble. So it's just... It, well, it's kind you, of how Vegas is it, too. Vegas when, gets when, bad, when yeah. When you leave Vegas, you're mm-hmm. like... Doo, 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 doo. Yeah. But it goes on sometimes for like two hours. And it just... Oh, wow. You don't think that... Like at no point did it get like very, very bad. But you're holding you know, your drink like this. You yeah. know, it's everything's shaking and clanging. But I don't know. I've flown enough now where it's just normal. Yeah. You know? It's like old hat. Well, I mean, even I, I still like, I, I like the thought of planes more than I like being on them. Yeah. Right now, even flying in comfort. Right. So, I don't know. You still think about things. It's are you natural? Are you binging TV shows? Are you watching watch movies? movies? Yeah. So if I know I'm going lately, I've been traveling a lot, so I haven't really been able to this stock up on them. But if I know that I'm going to be having a lot of flying coming up, like the last one that I actually planned for was Africa, right? So about a month before, I just stopped watching any new releases. Oh, okay. Yeah. Makes so, sense. Yeah. So like listen to the podcast, you stop listening to the podcast. You know what you should do is get like a Sudoku or something else mm. that you like where you can just plug in some air. You don't have to watch the screen. You're mm. listening to the podcast. Yeah. So yeah, no, I just watch, I just watch movies. Do you listen to your podcast ever? Uh, uh-uh, never. So all of this that we're talking about right now, you'll never listen to. Probably not, but I feel like I should because I don't trust what you're going to edit in and le- or edit out. I'm going to, I'm going to have a full on ten minutes of just me talking. It's going to, and I'll be, I'll just pretend it's your voice too, uh, and I'll just make up stories and and it make it be you. You should. Yeah. And you'll never listen. You'll never. No, care. you should, but just have them still message me so I could get my free points and miles for helping. <laughs> you don't care. You can actually just do my job <laughs> like, for me. Just do, yeah. Just <laughs> say whatever is going to bring people in. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but good. no, turbulence is very. It's like hitting a pothole. Very normal. Right. Totally normal. Turbulence has never brought down a plane. It hasn't. It never ripped a wing off. No. Never an uh, engine falling off. No. So then what's... Are you just saying that? No, it never has. Is that your opinion? Have you? Is there a fact? No. Siri. 
Has there ever been a plane planes have diverted crashed because of turbulence? Let's see. Here's what I found. Uh, February 14th, 2019. Yeah. So it's fairly recent. What is turbulence and can it cause your plane to crash? Crash. Turbulence is caused by eddies of rough air, a bit like waves. At what causes? This is the independent. Uh, dot co. Dot, mm. dot co. Dot uk. Do we? Do we? Do we like the independent? I have no clue. I don't know. All right. Uh, there are three main. It's thermal. Uh, this makes makes the aircraft rise and fall. Is it normal? It's completely normal. Pilots, can I be injured in turbulence? Yes. yes. If you fall, of course. Uh, Wear your seatbelt. What's always. the best thing to do? Uh, buckle up. Could turbulence bring down a flight? The short answer is yes, but it's very unlikely. So never has. People have diverted. People have landed because of damage, because drink carts and stuff. But the first is the is rare as the cause of a crash in transport. A uh, lot of examples from the '60s, the microbursts. Oh, that's so not maybe, turbulence though. Maybe, Microburst is very different. I mean, that's a massive elevation change. What is that? I mean, that's not general turbulence. What is microburst? I don't have no clue what it is. It's I I don't know the exact details, but I know it's a massive elevation change. Oh, yeah. So you're just like go, going from mountains to I believe so. Plains. Yeah, yeah. I'd be matter. lying to you if I tried to elaborate any more than that. But yeah. We could cover up your voice, microphone. We don't know who you are. Yeah, no, no. <laughs> I like to somewhat factual, at least something I think that I've heard in the, at some point, and I could, you know, like the asteroid. Things. Like an asteroid brought the coronavirus. Right. So you yeah. Can, you can use that. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, no turbulence is as annoying as it is. It's very normal. Very yeah, it is super annoying. Yeah, it's super annoying. Yeah, and it's just like boom. Where they where they tell you like buckle up yeah and then you're like you should just always wear your I already belt. knew that yeah, yeah. I buckle up no matter what I don't, don't what's the okay last thing last thing I know that you're not a part of the economy you're not a part of the business you're sitting in your own pod that comes over you mm-hmm. and you just it's a cryo chamber and you've got your fruity cocktails you got your large fruity screen in cocktails. front of you you've got all these different I'm drinking cool, Johnny Blue I'm yeah okay drinking. fine you got Johnny Blue going <laughs> yeah. you just got it's, Back massagers going, foot massagers, all of that. Yeah. Got your Yeezys popped off. Yeah, I do. But the other people Slippers on. sitting in the back. Yeah. The reclining issue on airplanes. What's your view on the recline? Do you ask before you recline? You should. Absolutely. Really? Yeah. Why not? Why, why even give that function? They, sh- they shouldn't. It's ridiculous. Why any domestic carrier has recline on any like a, the longest domestic flight is maybe if you have a super strong headwind it's going to be seven hours yeah you might have to stretch out a little bit i get it uh anything under five hours you do not need to recline and the, it's like a two inch recline though. then you got people like oh i have a sciatica every time i have this I'm like no you don't shut up uh yeah it doesn't like, do anything but it causes lines back there yeah you don't have a sciatica yeah everyone's <laughs> yeah um like it, it, it's just such a pain uh, for everyone else, you know, on the plane while you do it. And I get it, but I don't, I've reclined, um, just for a brief time. Cause I was going to close my eyes on a long international flight. And before I did, I turned my head back and I'd ask the guy if it was okay. If I reclined, if he was going to be working on his computer or going to be eating, uh, I wouldn't do it. And he was like shocked that, it, that I but, did that. He's yeah. like, yeah, wow. Yes. Thank you. You know? And, and so he said, go for it. But yeah. thanks for asking. Yeah. Totally, wow. totally was like, yeah. I mean. As he's just reclining this other person's lap. He's right. Like, oh, wow. We ask. I mean, I honestly, so the first time I ever flew to Germany, like within 45 minutes of like tray tables down, I had a drink on it, um, everything, everything. The guy, the guy in front of me literally slammed his seat back and it closed my laptop some and then it spilt my drink all on my lap down into my shoes at the beginning of a 10 and a half hour flight. Were they Yeezys? No, this was before I had Yeezys. This was but still a ten and a half ago. hour flight where you got just wet shoes the rest yeah, of the time inside my shoes. Did yeah. you punch them in the like? Did you I wanted to. I was just so mad. Right around the side, just yeah. Bah. I was so mad. Yeah. Did he I say mean, anything like "Hey, sorry"? No. No. Did, was he oblivious? Yeah. But people, that's the problem with unfrequent travelers. They're so retarded they don't even know it. <laughs> <laughs> like when you stand up, don't grab the seat in front of you. Like that's the dumbest. You know what I mean? People stand up and they put two hands on the seat. And they pull so I'm it. sitting there and, and you're just like bounce it, jars you back. And it like, I just do this every time. I'm like, like, you know, like, what are you doing? Yeah. You fool. 
Yeah. Yeah. So. Well, I, I feel you feel like you probably sit a little a little uh, short in the seat a little bit in front of you, so you probably look like a kid a little bit. Oh. Like a little, like a little, like probably like six year old. Uh, no. And then, and then they turn around. You turn around, like, whoa, this is a man. No. And they get a little afraid. I'm five nine. <laughs> okay. With the Yeezy, with those Yeezys on, you're like six two. Yeah, but they're tucked under the seat. <laughs> Flying economy. No one can see those. Yeah. Zach, I love you so yeah. much. I love you, buddy. But oh. I got another one for you. But yeah, is, just go along. Don't be an idiot when you travel. Do you want to do another one or are we? Yeah, I can do it. Let's do another one. Right. I got some Valentine's questions for you. That This is okay. way off course. Okay. Way. I don't know if I'm going to be, these are going to be, you know, I'm not very a good person probably to answer these. No. But yeah. It was a post oh, okay. from years ago. Oh, really? And and uh, it, it came up in my, in my timeline. So. Okay. All right. We'll talk about that one. All right. Everyone, thanks for listening. Uh, hey, don't check yourself. Carry on, and we've got uh, what was the other thing? The Zach part. Uh, I don't know. It was the, plain Zach. No, just <laughs> another time with just plain old Zach. <laughs>